shocking betrayals and passionate kisses unleashed in Genoa City. Young and the restless recap spills the tea on Christine catching Danny and Phyllis in a steamy lip lock. Meanwhile, Jordan's plot takes a dark turn, threatening the Newmans. And, is Phyllis heading back to prison? Christine's revenge looms as tensions soar in the Danny Phyllis love triangle. Brace yourselves for an explosive showdown. Don't miss a minute of the drama, stay tuned for more juicy updates. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. After watching these videos, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Christine catches Danny and Phyllis kissing on their chance date in the summer. The Restless and the Young Tuesday, January 16th recap and spoilers reveal that the day was full of drama in Genoa City. As the episode resumes on Monday, Summer Newman offers to help Chance Chancellor get over his split. After having a wonderful dinner and some laughter, the two go to society. Chance talks about how he and Sharon Newman broke up, how there are no hard feelings between them, and how after the awkwardness of their breakup fades, they'll probably become friends. In addition, Summer shares how she and Kyle Abbott are improving their co-parenting skills and making an effort to be friends. There is no kissing at the conclusion of the date, but Summer's mother more than makes up for it with her pretend date. Nikki Newman enters crimson as Lauren Fenmore is sipping her coffee. Nikki expresses gratitude to Lauren for everything she accomplished the previous evening, and her buddy makes it plain that she was terrified by the whole thing. Lauren continues by stating that she understands the value of sobriety to Nikki and, although initially being a little harsh on her friend for straying from the program, she does recognize the challenging situations Nikki has been going through lately. In addition to discussing her son's battles with addiction, Lauren assures Nikki that she can always count on her for support. Seth, Nikki's sponsor, enters, a little taken aback by the presence of women. The previous evening, Nikki thanked him for his assistance and mentioned that although she was at their AA meeting that morning, he wasn't. Seth, behaving strangely, says he's weary but he's coming to the meeting tonight. Nikki tells Lauren that Seth doesn't seem like himself after he departs to get a coffee. The rock star receives a text as he and his father, Daniel and Danny Romilotti, are hanging out in Daniel's apartment across town. Danny grimaces at the message, thinking it is from Christine Blair, but it turns out to be from Phyllis Summers. Lucy Romilotti shows up seeking grilled cheese, but from her mother Heather Stevens, not from her father or grandfather. The teenager texts her and extends an invitation to visit. The guys remark on how lucky Lucy must be to have both of her parents in the same town and that Heather is welcome to visit whenever she pleases as Lucy heads back to the kitchen to arrange the food. Danny confronts Daniel about his feelings over Heather's visit, but his son avoids the subject. Danny receives another text from Phyllis urging him to meet Heather at the jazz lounge once she arrives. Danny leaves without revealing to anyone else who he is meeting with. Phyllis also makes her way out of her hotel suite, wearing only her underwear under a trench coat. As soon as they meet, Phyllis begs Danny to play her his newest song, which she claims to love. She records it on camera, which seems harmless enough, but she also uploads the footage to social media, captioning it, TFW your ex plays you a love song, as she is seen on camera. Naturally, following his song, the two strike up a serious chat. When Danny inquires about Tucker McCall, Phyllis makes it plain that their relationship is unlike anything that she and Danny have in terms of passion, future, or connection. Danny receives a text from Cricket that shows him Phyllis's social media post while she subtly flashes her underwear beneath her coat. Phyllis is accused by Danny, who is furious, of not changing at all. When the two get into a quarrel, Red admits that Christine is equally cunning and explains that Danny was the one who suggested their weekend getaway. In a panic, Danny asks Phyllis whether she disclosed their recent kiss. She assures him that although she could have, she chose not to. Danny is challenged by Phyllis, 
who points out that he is faking it with cricket and acting at ease while, in reality, he is much more at ease with her. Rewind to Heather, Lucy, and Daniel, who are savoring hot chocolate with marshmallows after finishing their dinner. As Daniel thanks Heather for coming over at Lucy's request, the co-parents joke about who will do the dishes as Lucy, exhausted, heads upstairs to bed. He observes that Lucy enjoys spending time with her family. At this point, Heather makes a very big revelation to Daniel, telling him that she loves spending time with him at his house and that she is falling in love with him again. Rewinding to Phyllis and Danny at the lounge club, a displeased Danny leaves their seat and goes to the bar to order a drink. Phyllis follows him, and after some sultry repartee, the two lock lips, this time, though, Danny does not retreat. The concert naturally ends with Christine entering the jazz lounge through the stairs and locking lips with the two of them. Fans will have to tune in to their favorite CBS soap opera every day to see what happens next, as Young and the Restless spoilers indicate that Cricket and Phyllis's animosity will only get more intense in the coming weeks. The next update for today. Jordan moved to a mental health facility after getting out of prison and going after the Newmans. Spoilers for the Young and the Restless suggest that even if Aunt Jordan is behind bars, she still has ways of torturing her adversaries. Indeed, viewers lately got the impression that Cole Howard's aunt was not done getting back with the Newmans. Her meeting with Claire Grace on January 12th of last week was a significant turning point in helping the kid come to terms with her traumatic childhood experiences and upbringing. The exchange did, however, also seem to imply that Jordan might retaliate as soon as she has the chance against Claire, Nikki Newman, and the other members of the Newman family jam. Especially when she alluded to the idea that Claire was picking the wrong team to side with. However, Jordan's digressions also shed light on a possible direction for her plot's next chapter. Jordan is obviously psychologically ill in addition to being horrible and wicked. It won't be long before her attorneys file a motion to have her transferred to a mental health hospital while she's imprisoned. She clearly needs substantial assistance, but she is also dangerous. Furthermore, everything is conceivable in Janao City, where this site is located. Of course, nobody would argue that Jordan would be better off moving to a minimum security facility. Jordan might possibly be relocated without the Newman's knowledge. Could Jordan be admitted to a mental health hospital later this month or early next year, given that February sweeps is quickly approaching and that the little village will be the scene of the most dramatic drama? It might just take her a few days or weeks to devise an escape strategy. This time, Jordan may have Claire as her first target instead of Nikki in order to show her granddaughter that there is no moving forward from her and that she would always find a way to meddle and control her life. However, rumors pertaining to Young and the Restless indicate that fans will certainly see Aunt Jordan again after January's appearance, and she will probably be prepared to unleash havoc on Claire and the rest of the Newman family sooner rather than later. The next update for today. Phyllis's prison sentence, Christine's retaliation for her rival's overreaction? Spoilers for the young and the restless indicate that Phyllis Summers was fortunate to escape prison after killing Jeremy Stark and dodging the authorities. Though Phyllis was able to maintain her freedom, things could alter in the future. The court made it very apparent that Phyllis needed to accept her second opportunity by staying out of trouble. Phyllis still faces jail time in the event that she commits a single infraction that violates her probation. Phyllis is acting like an obsessive nut job by pursuing Danny Romilotti in spite of his rejection, rather than taking advantage of her freedom and acknowledging her fortunate break. Danny is adamant that Phyllis has changed, but is that really the case? This reminds me more of the same old Phyllis, one who schemes and undermines herself all the time. In the upcoming weeks, Phyllis and Christine Blair's conflict should intensify even further, for the benefit of YNR viewers. Phyllis might drive Christine to the brink, at which time Cricket might become resolute in her attempt to imprison her. 
Phyllis may enrage Christine more than ever once she foolishly makes some moves and attempts to entice Danny away once more. Although Christine has been discussing a new chapter that does not include serving as the DA, this may encourage her to continue in the role. Then again, as a normal Genoa City resident, Christine may still pursue Phyllis. It won't really matter if Phyllis is caught breaking her parole if Christine is employed. Christine just needs to make sure that Phyllis is caught breaching the law because the judge has the authority to send her to prison in any case. Naturally, Christine might lose Danny as a result of such kind of vindictive action. Even though Danny will be furious with Phyllis for her most recent transgressions, he might not think she should go to prison. Stay tuned for updates on all the exciting developments about this love triangle, as spoilers for the young and the restless suggest that all of this Phyllis drama may prove fatal for Danny and Christine. Thanks for watching this videos. Please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.